Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. It's actually been two months since I posted a video. I've been super busy, a lot has changed, but I'm still running my trucking business. My bookkeeping business is actually doing really great. It's crushing it. I absolutely love what I do. I'm so thankful that I was able to find a business that is not only successful, but also I am passionate about it. And I genuinely enjoy what I do on a daily basis. So for all of my clients out there, I truly appreciate you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve you in your bookkeeping, your accounting, and your taxes. But now, let's talk about my trucking business. So real quick, I started a trucking business two years ago with the hopes of creating a truly growable and scalable business. And I did it with the mindset of being able to outsource everything. And that has really inhibited my ability to be profitable because I'm really hands off. I don't really do anything with my trucking business. If you've been watching my videos for a long time, you probably already know this, but I hired a driver, I hired a dispatcher, I'm using a staffing agency, and they find me drivers for my truck, so I really don't do anything on like a day-to-day -day basis, day-to-day -day operations. So that's given me a lot of time, but that's really eaten up all of my profits. So here's what's happened so far the first nine months of 2022. I've lost $14,000. One really important thing to note is I have spent almost exactly $14,000 on my staffing agency. Hindsight is 2020, obviously. If I can go back in time, I would have put a lot more effort, a lot more time, and a lot more money into trying to find a driver on my own. I did not realize how expensive the staffing agency would be. Everything was great in January and February when the rates were super high, diesel was super low, and I was using my staffing agency. I was still profitable, I was still making money, but as everybody knows, rates plummeted, diesel skyrocketed, and so now I'm losing money, I'm not making any profit which is not really what you wanna be doing when you're starting a business. Keep in mind though, I'm not driving the truck, I'm not dispatching the truck, I've outsourced everything. So I'm not doing anything except for obviously, I invested a lot of money into the business, I'm managing it from a very high level. A couple of other things have been hurting my profits. So tolls are crazy expensive in the Northeast. I did not expect them to be as expensive as they are, especially Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. I'm spending like 10 cents for every mile that I'm driving on tolls. Not only that, but also the rates have just plummeted in the Northeast. I always knew the rates were really good in the Midwest, but they were a lot better in the Northeast. So I what I'm doing now is I'm staying away from the Northeast, which makes it difficult because my driver is based out of Pennsylvania. So every two weeks he has to come home. But other than that, I'm staying away from New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Connecticut, doing whatever I can to stay away from those states. I want to stay in the Midwest. Even the Southeast sometimes has good rates. I don't really go to the West Coast. I try to stay east of the Mississippi, so Midwest, Southeast, that's where I'm staying right now. Also, repairs have absolutely crushed me. That has also eaten into my profits. That's also contributed significantly to my $14,000 loss. Oil change, that's pretty standard. Like every two months, I'm spending about a thousand bucks on oil changes. But I just got a trailer and I had one of my tires blow out. That wasn't super expensive, like three or 400 bucks to repair that tire. The biggest thing that crushed me was I had to get my clutch replaced. It happened way back last winter. I got my clutch replaced down in Florida. So I went to a mechanic that I don't usually go to. I had to spend extra money to put my driver up in a hotel. I ended up spending like six to $8,000 just to get that clutch replaced. But because rates were so high in January, February, I actually made up almost all of that loss. So repairs, I got a 2016 International Pro Star with 600,000 miles on it. It was cheap, I got it for $65,000. I know two years ago that wouldn't have been cheap, but in 2022, $65,000 for a sleeper cab is a pretty good deal in my opinion. But if I'm going to get another truck, the next truck I get is going to be slightly newer with slightly fewer miles. Hopefully I spend less on the long run on repairs and maintenance. I'd rather spend a little bit more upfront and save on maintenance down the road. Okay, so I've lost $14,000, so what am I gonna do? The title of this video references something about me quitting and I really might quit. I lost a lot of money in 2021. I've already lost money in 2022. I'm not going to continue running this business if I'm losing money. Honestly, I would be okay if I break even. Like even if I make $0 and lose $0, I would probably still continue this business just so I can learn, hopefully grow, hopefully adapt to the market, the industry, the economy. 
and eventually be profitable, but I cannot continue running this business losing as much money as I'm losing. But I'm gonna change three things. Hopefully it works for my business. If you are an owner operator, if you have a trucking business, maybe try changing these things as well. So first of all, I'm done running any loads for less than 400 miles. They're really appealing. They seem really cool because I can run 100 miles. I can make 600 bucks. That's awesome, $6 a mile. But in the long run, two things are happening. One, my driver's not happy because he's paid per mile, not per hour. So he's barely making any money on those runs. They almost always take 24 hours. I found it nearly impossible to pick up, deliver, pick up, deliver two loads in one day. It just never works out. My driver always ends up spending extra time at the shipper or the receiver. Something ends up happening. He ends up getting lost because usually these short runs are like city to city. So like if he's driving in Chicago or New York or Boston or Philadelphia, chances are he's gonna run into traffic. He might get lost, he might make a wrong turn. So whatever the case may be, with these short runs, I'm never able to do two in one day. So my driver never gets enough miles to be happy. And in the long run, my fixed expenses are about a thousand bucks a week, no matter what. Depreciation on the truck, insurance, my loan for my trailer, no matter what, I'm spending a thousand bucks a week. So those fixed expenses don't go anywhere. So I need to make a certain number of revenue in, in a week to, for it to even make sense. Like, yeah, my cost per mile, my rate per mile might be super high, but if I'm only running 500 miles a week, it doesn't matter how much money I'm making rate per mile, I'm not gonna be profitable. So I really wanna stay as close to 2,500 miles as possible. And the only way to do that is to only run 400 mile loads or more. So I've already told my dispatcher, I want nothing less than 400 miles for every single load. So far for the past two weeks, we've been doing that. We've been averaging like right around $2.80 per mile with deadhead included, very important. Deadhead is always included in all my calculations, but like 260 to 290 is kind of the range I'm at right now with these 400 mile loads. The other reason is I want to stop running like 700 mile loads because those are absolutely killing my rate per mile. So like what we've been doing is we've been running like a 200 mile load on Monday and Tuesday and then we'll scramble at the end of the week running 700 miles on Friday just to make up for missed miles. And those 700 mile loads, as you know, are paying just terribly, like 220 a mile for seven, 800 miles. So I wanna avoid the extremes, the 200 mile loads. I wanna avoid the 700 mile loads. I wanna stay in that sweet spot, 400 mile loads making 270, 280 a mile. The second thing I'm doing to try to stay profitable is I'm staying away from the Northeast for two reasons. Rates are dropping rapidly in the Northeast and tolls are just crazy expensive. So it's just not worth it. So we're getting out of the Northeast as fast as we can and we're staying in the Midwest and the Southeast. The third thing I've been doing is I've been trying to cold call more direct shippers. I know everybody talks about it. It's kind of this unicorn. People think finding direct shippers really is the dream for any carrier. That's how brokers do it. That's how big carriers do it. We can cut out the middleman essentially if we can just go straight to direct shippers. But what I've been finding, so many direct shippers really wanna work with brokers because brokers somehow are giving them great rates and brokers are more reliable. Like if my truck breaks down, then this direct shipper is kind of out of luck. But with a broker, if his truck breaks down, he'll just find another truck because he's got access to thousands of other carriers. So direct shippers are a little hesitant to work with small carriers like me. I'm really confident as long as I continue grinding, continue calling, continue emailing, continue researching, as long as I put in a little bit of work every single day, I'm pretty confident that I will eventually find that diamond in the rough. And what I really wanna find is just some mom and pop shop who you know runs from Pennsylvania to Chicago once a week or once a month, get a couple of those people and they'll pay me 280, 290, three bucks a mile. I can cut out the factoring company, I can cut out the broker, and hopefully they can save a little bit of money, I can make a little bit of extra money. And the goal is, you know, over the next two or three years, hopefully I build my, my book of clients and I have four, five, six, seven direct shippers out of Pennsylvania and I can just work with those direct shippers. I can stay away from the load boards, I can cut out the brokers and I can make a little bit extra money. So far it hasn't worked, but that's the plan. Okay, so finally, obviously I cannot continue running this business at the losses I've been taking. So I talked about my staffing agency. I've got four more weeks left on my contract. So I had to keep using them for six months with my driver. 
We've got four more weeks left with them. So after that, I'm gonna stop using the staffing agency. I'm gonna hopefully keep my driver, pay him directly. I'll be saving five to $700 per week by not using the staffing agency anymore. And peak is coming up. If you don't already know, September, October, November, peak season is here. So warehouses are stocking up for the busy season, Black Friday, Christmas, people buy more things during peak season. So that means warehouses and distribution centers, they need more freight. So now is a good time for us. Hopefully we can, hopefully there's more freight out there. Hopefully we can stay busy, make a little extra money. So here's what I wanna do. I'm done using the staffing agency come October. So I'm gonna look at the numbers from November and December. And this is the deciding point. I'm going to, I'm gonna quit if I am still losing money after the staffing agency and during peak. If I can't make money in this November and December, uh, there's no reason for me to keep this trucking business. But if I can be profitable in November and December, I'm gonna forget about the first 10 months of the year using the staff agency, crazy repairs. It was my first year with a semi truck. I'm gonna forget about the first 10 months. If I can be profitable in November and December, I'm gonna get another truck in January. I'm gonna try to scale up. So stay tuned. I'll keep you guys updated.